Hi everybody and welcome to my review of The Elder Scrolls Online. My name is Gossie the Dog, aka Kevin Beaumont. Okay, so I'm going to take you through The Elder Scrolls Online. I'm in a unique position where I played over 1,000 hours of the game. Now, I'm sure there's other people who've done that, but I suspect it's probably very little amount of people who've done that for the simple reason that this game has a terrible reputation online. What I want to show you as I start this review is some of the locations in the game. So this is a jungle. Uh, where some of the elf races live and next we're going to take you to a place called Stone Falls which is near Morrowind you may reckon some you may recognize some of the architecture such as for example the mushrooms in the distance uh, I just want to say at this point that the game world in the Elder Scrolls Online is bigger than Oblivion, Morrowind and Skyrim combined the game world, the open world, is absolutely huge as far as I'm aware it's one of the biggest in any video game previously made. Uh, the amount of content in this game world is staggering, I'll get onto that too. What you're looking at now is a location in Skyrim that was we're currently running towards Kynesgrove and now we're in the desert. So yes, uh, as we're going to get onto, the amount of content and the amount of uh, open world in this game is absolutely staggering. I believe that the reputation that this game has is not deserved. Okay, so before we get too far into it, I just want to briefly explain uh, some elements about the game which will help you make sense of the game world. So, The Elder Scrolls Online is, as the title implies, an online video game. However, can it be played in single player? Actually, presuming you have an internet connection, yes, you can play a vast majority of the content in this game on your own without any assistance or any friends. Uh, there's the amount of single player in the game uh, single player content in the game is absolutely staggering all the NPCs in the game are fully voiced and it has a full main quest there's a full mages guild there's a full fighters guild and the dark brother and, and thieves guild are coming to the game as I understand it next year so uh, in terms of multiplayer content there are currently as I'm as I'm talking, they keep adding content to the game. There's 16 four-player dungeons. That means four of your friends can get together and play 16 group dungeons. There's lots of public dungeons where you can just walk in with friends or dotted all around the world or on your own and try and conquer them. There's also 12-player trials, which are probably the equivalent of, or I could equate them to, the raids from Destiny. So trials are, are quite taxing normally. You need 12 people to do them, and the team that completes them the quickest gets higher placed in the leaderboards. Okay, so what other content is in the game world? So in the fiction of The Elder Scrolls Online, uh, the... There's three different factions in Tamriel, and they're at war, and what they're at war at, or over, is what does that do? There's lots of reasons why they're at war, and it's explained in the single-player quests. Uh, however, one of the elements is that there's currently no Emperor, so uh, in The Elder Scrolls Online, if you're the best player of your faction, you can actually become Emperor of all of Elder Scrolls Online. Um, which is kind of crazy. Uh, the bonuses that you get for becoming Emperor uh, is some... Uh, well, there's actually lots of bonuses. You gr you gradually get more powerful, and to be honest, you, I would, don't want to use the word invincible, but you become almost invincible if you become Emperor. However, other players can depose you as Emperor. It's all to do with the forts. So in Oblivion, because this game is a prequel to Oblivion, you may remember some forts, uh, you, when you first step out of the sewers in Oblivion, you saw a fort in front of you and it's destroyed. Okay, so in this game, the forts still exist and there's wars going on over them. Now, as players, you can bash down the walls using trebuchets uh, and ballistas and then go inside and conquer those forts. And the way you conquer the forts is you take the flags. As you see on screen, there's a flag at the bottom of this hill, which is at a mine. Uh, if we stood on that flag, we would conquer the mine and by taking the mine it would make the walls easier to bring down on the forts by taking the forts around the imperial city which is at the center of this uh, of Cyrodiil um, if you take all those forts then your faction uh, becomes emperor and one of your players is the emperor and like I say that that player becomes incredibly powerful 
Now, when you play in Cyrodiil, which is the PvP element of the game where you can fight other factions, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best elements of the game and it's something that I return to very often, in fact, almost daily with this game still. And I've got a large amount of friends that I play with. Um, I jump between different guilds. Um, there's always people I know online on Xbox and on PC because I play both versions. Um, and it's it's always fun. So this is a character that I've started from scratch uh, with the launch of the Xbox version that I play purely PvP with and I've made it to level 31. Now in the game there's standard uh, levels which you go from level 1 to 50 and then there's currently a system called veteran ranks where you can level up to veteran through the veteran ranks. There's currently 14 veteran ranks however soon there's 16 veteran ranks. Now as you can probably gather by the amount of levels there, the amount of content in the game, as I've already discussed, is staggering. If you just played the single player and listened to the dialogue, you could easily get several hundred hours out of just playing single player content in this game. Or you can team up with friends and also do that content. Now, one of the bad sides about this game is that they still haven't got the questing system quite right. It's a lot better than when the game first launched, however, if you're playing with friends, you can't always complete every quest together because sometimes you get phased into different instances and can't see each other, depending on choices, that kind of thing. So, not everything is perfect about this game yet. However, that does let me talk about another element to this game, which is because it's an online game and because it has a very active development community. If you look on LinkedIn, the makers of this game, Zenimax Studios, still employ uh, hundreds of people. I think it's it's uh, around about 500 staff members are still working full time on this game. Uh, so they are constantly fixing things and adding new content to the game. That's been one of the advantages of the game since launch on PC and uh, soon on Xbox. They've added, for example, on PC many dungeons. They've added the justice system, which lets you steal, break into houses, murder NPCs, etc. And then you will face retribution for the law. That wasn't in the game at launch. It's very much worth talking about how much this game has improved since launch on PC. When it launched on PC, the game quickly gathered a very poor reputation. There's actually many different elements of that. I think part of it is uh, that people, a lot of people just wanted Skyrim 2 or Skyrim with co-op. This game is neither of those things. Whilst it does present a very good way for you and your friends to have an enjoyable time, and like I've said many times in this review, so I'm going to stop saying it now, hopefully, uh, the amount of content in this game is staggering. So if you and your friends want to journey into Tamriel and explore the world together, the game is relatively cheap. And like I say, I, I personally believe that the amount of content is, is makes the price of admission one worth it, especially because it's no longer a subscription fee for this game. So to be clear, since there's much confusion on, that, on this point, the game is not free to play. You still have to buy the game, however, there's no longer a subscription charge, nor will there ever be a subscription charge for the game. There's optional DLC packs that you'll be able to buy for the game, and at QuakeCon, they very recently said, in the last few days, in fact, they've said that the content for Elder Scrolls Online will be added quarterly. So you'll be able to buy new DLC for the game quarterly. Or not, if you don't want to. Okay, so one of the key elements, I think, to an open world game, especially an online game, is how well you can customise your character. In this game, there's uh, different races. Obviously, you can join a different faction and get involved in the war and there's lots of different armor. In this game, you can use any armor and any weapon with any class. So it's kind of different from, from many of the MMOs. I think the system works very well. So as somebody who attended the midnight launch of Skyrim and who bought an Xbox 360 to be able to play Oblivion properly because my PC wasn't good enough back then, and somebody who owned Morrowind, how does this world stack up in an Elder Scrolls sense? Now, it's not full Elder Scrolls because it's primarily an online game. However, it has a very rich Tamriel lore. They've done a very good job with that. I think many of the quests in the game are actually quite compelling. 
there's some really inventive uses of the uh, structure in the game. There's also a lot of filler quests, unfortunately. You know, go here, fetch that. However, to be honest, there was in Skyrim, and I absolutely fucking loved Skyrim. So, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my 1,000 plus hours in the game, and I plan to actually continue playing because I think this game is great. Um, it's also worth noting that I play many other games. I don't just play this game. I think, in, in my experience of the game, it's been a very enjoyable time. Okay, so one of the things about Elder Scrolls games is that it's about personal experience. I personally believe that this is one of the best Elder Scrolls games and best online games. And if other reviews and people don't agree with that, they can suck it, because this game is fantastic. 